Now, we're joined this morning by someone who knows quite a bit about MF Global, and as we wait for the big announcement, let's see what we have to say. Sure, Alex Diaz Matos is here from Covenant Review. Alex, you specialize in looking at covenants. These are the documents that effectively surround a bond offering. MF Global raised money back in August. What do these bond covenants tell us about the potential for recovery if, in fact, MF Global ends up either being sold off in pieces or perhaps enters bankruptcy protection? Well, the bankruptcy scenario for bondholders isn't looking that great because they'll be in line with all of the other unsecured creditors. And um, there's a covenant issue there. As we pointed out in our report in August, um, there are no guarantees of the MF Global bonds. So they'll be in a, uh, a line with a long list of other creditors. Is there something unusual about the MF Global bonds, something different, say, about these bonds than similar bonds issued by other securities firms? Absolutely. Uh, when they were offered in August, uh, they have a key man provision, which relates to John Corzine. At the time, bond investors were so, uh, they thought so highly of Corzine that if he left the company, they wanted an extra 1% interest in uh, payments. Um, now we see that it's arguably Corzine's fault uh, responsible uh, for the increased trading risk, which is causing all the problems. Can you speak to the change of control language? Because hasn't that made it more difficult for someone to potentially acquire them? Well, the change of control language that they got is a little unusual for financial companies, but quite common for investment grade companies. Um, while a, uh, a sale of substantially all assets, for example, to another company would often trigger a 101 put right for bondholders. So maybe there's a little difficulty in terms of an acquirer working around that provision. But from a bondholder's perspective, it's good protection to have, especially in a scenario like this. Does that provision become triggered if only part of the company gets sold? For example, if they were to sell, I mean, what we've been hearing and what we've been talking about the past couple of days, we go back to Friday, is the possibility that they would just sell the futures brokerage and leave the rest of the firm, if not intact, take the rest of the firm into bankruptcy protection. Unfortunately, there aren't any bright lines here. So uh, you'll have to take a look at, at all of the numbers and say, are you in court? Is this substantially all of the business? Well, you can look at a variety of uh, different metrics for that argument. And you know, certainly the futures business is one which people very much like. And obviously, that's why they would be interested in selling. But it's the, but it's the positions that are at issue here, right? The European sovereign debt positions, right. uh, a proprietary bet effectively that was taken off balance sheet. It's not, it's not really part of the client balances. It's not part of the assets and liabilities as stated in the financials. But when you're looking at the company as a whole, you've got to take care of everything um, off balance sheet, on balance sheet. You can look at a variety of metrices. So um, in terms of substantially all, that's uh, an interesting angle. When they brought the bond deal to the market in August, it was investment grade. Right. Is there talk right now that there were disclosure issues or, or maybe even dishonesty issues? Well, they were certainly on the cusp of investment grade, and right now they're benefiting from the fact that they have investment grade style covenants rather than more restrictive high yield style covenants. Um, whether there's any fraud involved, I can't speak to that. Um, certainly at the time. Do you think the rating agencies were slow in taking a closer look? I think that uh, I'm actually relatively pleased that they, they've taken a look when they have. So uh, given uh, historical actions, this probably isn't so bad. Be thankful for small mercies, I guess. Indeed. Alex, thanks so much. Alex Diaz Matos of Covenant Review talking to us about some unusual provisions in the bonds MF Global sold investors back in August.